my name is Erin Brophy. I am the principal oboe player of the Saskatoon Symphony. I'm also a sessional lecturer at the University of Saskatchewan and the new director of a new program called the Oboe Path. I had a very full life. <laughs> I would have described myself as being exceedingly busy um, and on a path towards burnout. Um, I have, a, I get a lot of joy from uh, sharing music, performing. That's mostly what I do as I'm a performer. Um, I've always loved teaching and it's been a big part of my, um, uh, it's been a big part of my life uh, for 25 plus years. Um, and I was sort of a victim of my own success in that I had more students than I knew what to do with. Um, and I just didn't have the time available to um, help them at the level that I wanted to or um, have the dedication to my students. Um, and mostly because I just had so many. Um, and that, you know, had an impact on my personal life as well. Um, I'm a mom and uh, I, was, uh, I was trading time uh, with my daughter so I could teach lessons um, and I was missing soccer games and I was missing being able to make dinner <laughs> um, for my family um, and those are two things that are really important to me. Um, I rehearse in the evenings often so I was jamming my teaching right before my performing and it meant that um, I wasn't getting as much time with my family as, as at this stage as, as I wanted to. It has been um completely transformative um uh you know I I started with a niggle in my brain of like well what if I could just make more money and work less um and um I came across you in social media and um and now that I'm working with you <laughs> I mean I I can't it has com completely shifted how I'm doing um everything in 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 my professional life um I would describe now that I have so much more balance, um, but probably most importantly, and I think that maybe people watching today would be interested in knowing is that I've had a mindset shift from a place of service. Um, I used to think of teaching as something that I was serving my students. And when I changed my and shifted my mindset to thinking of it as a business that not only served my students, but also served myself, um, when I shifted that mindset, uh, to my great surprise, um, I became a better teacher. Um, what I am currently offering my students is better than what I used to do beforehand. And I, I think it's because I have a little bit more balance in my life. Um, I'm able to um, provide services at the level that I want to um, by um, grouping everyone together. Um, and that's, that's had a significant impact on my life. Um, I have more time to practice. Um, I have more time to do those creative projects in terms of teaching that I've always wanted to do um, that have been sort of on the back burner because I didn't have time. There were just too many students. Um, and, I, I, you know, I, I, this past month, I've made dinner for my family every night. <laughs> I had uh, uh, 18, 19 students, um, somewhere online, somewhere in person, um, but they were all one on one. And that was running me about 12 hours a week. Um, and I, I teach sort of what I say, like cradle to grave, like I teach beginners through the whole experience up to, um, I also teach at the university and uh, teach musicians how to be, uh, oboe players how to be musicians. So like, you know, I, I saw everyone and they were all at different stages. Um, and it was a lot of time, one-on-one -on -one time. And what I've done to shift my program is for my students that were in person, um, who I'm, you know, I love my students. I have a relationship with each one of them. And, you know, recognizing that I needed to make a change, I was really apprehensive about what do I do with these beautiful people in my life that I care about and I want them to get better at the oboe. How do I serve, you know, how do I, how do I, how do I have the balance of both things? And, you know, when I push myself to be creative about it, and I asked myself the question, like, why am I doing one-on-one -on -one lessons? Um, I think the answer was, th is that I needed the money. <laughs> and I was not so sure that it was serving the student. Um, my, my, especially my beginners and my high school students, um, the reason they're coming to me is because they want to make music with other people and they want to be, get better at the instrument, yes. 
Um, but they're at the sort of uh, beginning stages of their journey. And what I could offer them in the lesson was perhaps more than what they could take. So very frequently, uh, my students would come to their lessons saying, oh, I had drama and I'm president of the school and I, I had a swim meet. And so I haven't practiced since I saw you last. And I just, I, I, you know, it struck me that I, them coming to see me every week was, was serving me, not them. So I've redesigned my program. Um, my and I'm only teaching. I've taken all of those uh, 18 students and put them into one hour. And I see um, my uh, beginner students, grades six through eight, um, one week for an hour, and then the following week I do my high school students for an hour. And I've created this group program where, in addition to working on oboe skills, which we of course will do, we are also going to be working on ensemble skills, um, which is you know making music with their peers um, and making music together. Um, it's one of my specialties in teaching is teaching how to play with others. Um, and I wasn't able to do that in my one-on-one -on -one lessons short of playing duets. And the other aspect of the program is performance skills. And this is something that parents really want to hear about is, you know, um, the, teaching and training these uh, young musicians to be able to stand up and perform in front of their peers to speak eloquently about what they're um, what they're uh, uh, presenting, which, you know, for, for parents has a long, you know, lifelong impact. Uh, the parents really like the performance skills side. And um, and then uh, the musicians get to, uh, the oboists get to learn from each other in their each of their stage. And what my uh, uh, observation has been is that um, they're inspired to practice <laughs> because, um, you know, I'm a lovely person and they knew if they came to their weekly lesson, they could explain they didn't have time to practice. But it's much more difficult if they're performing in their group program to say that to their peers. <laughs> So I actually, I think, uh, you know, the improvement that I've heard in my musicians um, has been much greater than my one-on-one -on -one lessons. And, you know, I personally have loved my one-on-one -on -one lessons in my own development, but I've also loved master classes. And I think that there's a place for one-on-one -on -one lessons, but it's not every week. So, um, and that's really lifted up so much time in my schedule to be able to do the other things that I want to do. And I get to choose the time. I'm not accommodating another family's very busy schedule. I set the time if they can come. Great. I should also point out that I'm charging a little bit more than I like for their one on one lessons. They're getting to see me for an hour every other week, and I'm charging more than I did when they were taking one-on-one -on -one lessons. So there's also been a financial impact as well. <laughs> in addition to my in-person program that I completely turned around, I also now offer my online services in a completely different way. It's very, very high touch. Um, and um, these young oboists that uh, join me on the oboe path um, have an opportunity to really level up their game very quickly. Um, and uh, I was explaining this to um, uh, my clients, uh, uh, my clients and their parents, uh, it, when I was discussing the program, and um, when I, you know, I was, I had some fear around um, increasing my prices. Um, I, you know, uh, I felt like uh, I had some imposter syndrome that I had to work through to to say, you know, this is how much this program will cost. This is so much more than what I've been able to do one on one with your students. This is. So, um, so much more of an immersive um, experience. And uh, my very first client that said yes, and uh, I was gobsmacked at how easy um, I just laid out my price. And she said, uh, can I e-transfer that to you right away? And I thought, yeah, <laughs> yes, you can. <laughs> And so she sent me the money and uh, with sending me the money, wrote me a beautiful thank you note, uh, which I surprised me. Um, I was not anticipating that. I just thought, you know, the money's enough. But um, uh, she wrote this note thanking me for the time and, and thought it had taken to put together this program and that she felt like her daughter was very well taken care of and that I was a very important person in their family. And I just, you know... <laughs> Um, that uh, yeah, it it, it it I mean it it still means a lot. I get a little teary when I think of um, you know something that's as good for me is as good for my students. You know um, that there's a way that we can both be um, gaining and learning through uh, through being creative with how we offer um, musical instruction.
the commitment, Fabiana, in my high tick pro ticket program, that's what I see as being the significant difference. And I think it it has to cost more for them. I, in fact, in that that my very first client, when I said the price, the mother did not react. The uh, student looked at, at the mother and said, I guess I have to practice now. <laughs> <laughs> I mostly pref like my my main job my main gig is playing in the Saskatoon Symphony and I make $35,000 a year performing um I'm very lucky to have a position in Canada that's something I feel very grateful for but it doesn't pay a lot of money um up at, and last year uh I was just doing my taxes and uh I made $12,000 um teaching and I I looked at that as a major supplement to because it was like a third of my salary and I've already, I mean, I started studying with you on April 24th and I've already exceeded um, my annual uh, teaching salary, um, like by a, a great deal. Um, and that's just with my online program. My in-person program right now is on track to make more than $20,000 for one hour. I should also note that I did not lose a single student. And in fact, I have nine new clients in my group program. I, I have cultivated a life of gratitude. And um, I think that what made me cry is realizing that I had been accepting where I was um, and not wanting to grow. And with uh, everything that I was learning from you in the masterclass, I realized that there was another level, there was another place that I could go, but it felt really scary. And just also fundamentally, uh, financially, you know, um, I don't, I, I, sorry, I did not make a lot of money. And so to, to venture into this business and to uh, use your services felt like a really big risk um, financially. And I was not, I am always been a person that has, um, uh, you know, uh, not been financially risky, um, very, very careful with money. I live very simply. Um, and so that, that's, it bubbled up all these feelings of like, what if I fail? You know, what if this is, what if this affects my family? What if this, what, you know, you know, what if this puts us in major debt? You know, I, I, I don't, I, I don't want to take this risk. And I wish I could go back to that. Um, <laughs> I wish I could go back to Aaron four months ago and say, take a deep breath, take a deep breath. Um, if you think, I mean, and just do it. <laughs> um, I remember thinking during the masterclass, um, watching it, thinking, wow, she's giving me all this amazing free information that's really getting my juices flowing. And I'm really looking at my life differently. What more could she possibly know? And I have to say, now that I've been in your program, like, it, it's just, I mean, every time we have an accountability call, I feel like I'm like, Oh my God, <laughs> that makes so much sense. That's going to help me so much. And to get the very specific feedback from you of like, no, Aaron, this is exactly where you are right now in your business development. It felt like uh, it, it, it really clarifies things for me and it keeps me on track. Um, I think too, I could have done this on my own. I have um, I have, uh, skills. I'm a smart person. I know I'm a, have a can do spirit. I could have done this on my own, but Fabiana, what you have saved me is literally years of mistakes. And I, you know, I think that in terms of a cost benefit of being able to save, uh, save myself the years of making poor decisions or learning things as I go, um, I, it's a very, very worthwhile investment. I should also say, Fabiana, that um, I, I'm surrounded by, I, said, I think I said this in our first meeting, I'm surrounded by businessy people. Like um, my brother is a corporate high level uh, leadership corporate banker. And my father actually teaches entrepreneurial studies at a university up here in Canada. And it was actually talking to my dad and saying, you know, I, I've met this woman named Fabiana and I, I, you know, I've been watching her stuff and I'm not sure if I should engage with her. I know that it will have a cost associated to with it. And, you know, dad, maybe you can just help me. I mean, you teach people how to start businesses all the time. And my dad said, you know, there's nothing like the value of someone who knows the space that you're trying to enter. And I think you should give this Fabiana lady, you should give her a chance. And um, I followed my dad's advice. 